Hello America, London calling. So today I'm joined by filmmaker extraordinaire, Dean Woodford. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bit cheesy, isn't it? Yeah, it's right. Don't be bad. It's called words. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Let's start with discussing your upcoming film tomorrow, which is a, a drama that focuses on the psychological effects of war. Can you tell us what inspired you to get involved in telling this story? Uh, yeah, I, um, I met... Uh, Sebastian Street and Stuart Brennan. They had seen a film I've previously worked on in the interest in UK and introduced it. So they gave me a script um, tomorrow and I had a way through. And at first I was a little bit off because it's about war and stuff. And I was, you've got to be careful how we, you know, how we portray war because, you know, we're invading these countries and whatever. But anyway, it's a bit into politics. But, um, so I read it, but it was really intriguing because when I read it, it was much more, it's, it's so character driven and, and it's more the psychological dunes of how. These guys come back from that. There's no politics in it. I mean, we work, you know, we work with um, helping heroes and stuff like that on the film just to make sure we've got um, everything right because the guys spine the injuries and travels. We want to make sure everything was accurate. Yeah. Um, but when I read it, it was just really cool just reading. You know, when you start off in this industry, you get a lot of horror films and um, gangster films, and it seems to be the thing around London. So um, to, to get a, a drama, a solid drama about something which is meaningful. And current um, as well. Yeah, you know, you know, coming out of Afghanistan, and, you know, everyone has their views on what we should be doing, what we shouldn't. Thanks to your award-winning short, Praying for the Angels, um, a very noticeable man is on the production team for tomorrow, um, Marcus Corsetti. So, how does it feel to be recognised by someone of such status? Do you feel like you've learned quite a lot from this process as well? Oh yeah, that is incredible. Because I, I went, I made a, a short, the, the short film and that done well, and then I made a feature film off uh, with some. Basically, I was at uh, college to study film, and I halfway through it just thought, why am I studying? Why am I not making? It? So I just went out and I knew how. I just got. To, it just makes sense. Again. I don't know why. As soon as you feel like, equipped with... Yeah, I just... It, it somehow all kind of makes sense. So, yeah, we went and made this film and, um, and I met Martha, who's the director of the Steel Film Festivals. Um, and I just showed her this film and she loved it. It was great. Um, and then the guy's seen it. And then, um, yeah, we it kind of went on from then. Then I got this script and I showed it to Martha. He said, we might direct. And then we all went. He said, how about getting the, you know, the big cheap bombs? You know, she'd been a script supervisor with... Um, Scorsese. Scorsese for, for quite a long time. Yeah. So there's a connection there. So I, I thought, well, that's a bit, you know, why don't we just ask? Well, hey, you, don't ask me. Don't ask me. We're in the same position we were anyway. And lo and behold, he read it, loved it, and said, hey, come to New York. And we're just like, <laughs> blown away. Yeah, man, it was insane. Yeah, it was a really crazy time. Um, and then we sat in his living room discussing the film, you know, with Andrew Sebastian Street and Stuart Brennan. Yes, and <laughs> yeah, man, I was just sat in the living room with like, pet corby on my lap, and <laughs> talking about films and stuff, man, it's really cool. And he, you know, he hadn't just put his name to it, he had read the script, he gave notes, and he had all his crew and cast and people who get involved, and to sit there, it was so surreal. Let's talk about your, um, your birthmark, um, your port wine stain um, birthmark that, you know, it's got to be noted that you've taken something which was once contributed to low levels of confidence, um, but it's now a, a unique um, feature that you choose to embrace. Yeah. You're even a supporter of the Birthmark support group. And what advice can you give to anyone who's in a similar situation to you? Yeah, it was, do you know what it was? It was really weird going, going to the film industry and you're surrounded by, you know, what society says is beautiful people, you know, okay. it's what you see on film. So to go in there with, you know, a big red, I'm kind of a hellboy yeah. kind of red up. I think that's um, pretty, yeah, pretty like, cool. That's my fancy dress this year, man. I'm going to do it for Halloween. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, to go into that was really scary. But then I realised it, it's the moment. I, I so when I started out doing films, I'd go around to film festivals. I do see things like the Kingdom of Matrix. Yeah, so you go to film festivals and then find out who's won, and then you go on the IMDb and you find out who's part of the crew. You just say one of the crew get into the IMDb. Um, 
So I used to do that, and then, you know, we, the thing is, when you make the film industry, there's thousands of us doing it now. I mean, there is, there's, there's literally thousands, and everyone's handing over their film and doing this. I hand over a film and I've got three red hands, and it just kind of like, I remember uh, Stuart was just like, came away from the film festival, and instantly he wanted that, that just stuck. And then I started realizing what it was, and this is, you know, I've got tattoos, I've got this, everyone wants to be unique, from having piercings, tattoos, wearing alternative clothing, whatever. Um, and I, I've got like, this bit already, man. Like, I've got this like, right, you know. Yeah. The success you've had in a relatively short space of time is astonishing. What do you credit for your success? <laughs> I, I think, first and foremost, I think what you see is I, I'm not making films because of money and fame. I simply absolutely obsess over the film. Like, I, it, that's all I do, I watch films, and I film small indies to, you know, and, but, and so when I get to meet these people, like, I can, I can chat, I open them up, but I'm not there for the money, it's not, that doesn't mean It's the best way to be, though. Yeah, well, this is, it's, a, it's an art. Are there any goals that you have in mind that you'd love to achieve, despite the fact you've achieved so much already? Yeah, I, so I, I now got a writing, so I, I've got more into my writing, I used to do comics and stuff, so, and I've had, I, now I've got kind of like the backing of someone like Scorsese, it's given me the ability to be able to say, well, I want to do this, people do, I think I'm going to take it seriously now. Listen to me now, because you've got that really name. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I've got a film, a uh, feature film, which I've written and directed in the new year, um, which I'm really excited about, it's a very personal film. Um, a lot of stuff, I've just unleashed, I say it's like my little m and that I've unleashed my what I went for as a kid onto this film and nothing <laughs> people you know, going for it so I'm like That's it for this week. Back to you in the studios, Oliver.